I better All right, keep my we are day job. Here. We are here for episode four, four. of Doll Talk on Doll Squad. Doll Talk. Doll Squad. Doll Squad. Doll Squad. I thought it was Doll Talk. Wrong. Wow. All right. I guess I need some more coffee today. That's a different. It's been a night. That's a different podcast. That's a different podcast. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Doll Squad Unfiltered. Filtered. We're Episode here for four. it. All right. Episode four. What are we covering today? We're covering a lot. We've got shrooms, new launches. Baby. We're going to talk about mushrooms. My yes. favorite product of the year is launching. Like, I've already used She three won't even let me talk about contain- it. No, I'm talking about it. I've already used <laughs> three containers of this, three bottles. I, I am obsessed with it beyond words. Um, and we're going we're gonna to talk about why. You have a new launch that you're excited to talk about. I am very we're gonna, excited we're gonna to talk, talk about, about my launch. Your upcoming schedule, <laughs> which is a little wild. It's good, and we're gonna good. we're gonna get into some Q and A like we always do. Yeah, I so, love that. Um, all right, let's do it. So wait, how was your week? My week was honestly my week. Can I be honest? Yeah, it's been like a fucking train wreck. Really? Yeah. How come? It's just been a lot of shit. What's the matter? Like the girls aren't sleeping. Brian decided he's taking Landon snowboarding. Like, well, that's good. My hot water heater wasn't working. That's yesterday. not good. Like, you know, just shit. Was it just the just pilot? Shit. The the light? The pilot for the hot the water heater? Came and fixed it. Probably just the light. I, you know, I have to tell you guys this. Just okay, ready? Shit. I am Lee's auto mechanic. Oh my God! Yes. I am now Lee's home mechanic. I got to teach you, you know this what stuff. Ha- you do. Emily knows how to do it. She's got her own tool bag. Well, Emily, I don't have my own tool bag. Well, I we am need as to handy te- as a foot. We need to teach you about these things. I bet the pilot light just went out. No, I don't think so. He All had right, to. He had to do something. I don't know. It happens like pretty regularly mm. unfortunately um so i've just been like pretty tired you know it's been like a tiring uh, i i still think with the the change in in the time zone it still messes up your circadian rhythm Could. i think it screws you up and i think people like struggle to get back i think it's stupid your body knows what time it is like freaking clock shit i know i agree how was your week i don't even know what i did <laughs> it's already Thursday. I, I, it? I will say the bright side is I had a show the last week night. has gone by really fast. Yeah, really fast. You had a show? Yeah, a show with Jane last night. Really? I did. I was watching. It was great. I was, it was watching on Q2. HSN last it night. It was Q2. Oh, you're watching Amy yeah, on... I, Amy. Um, I love her. Do not love her. I love Amy. That girl She's is so the absolute best. Beautiful, and Ugh. she has such good style. And she is... The thing with Amy... She's a kind we're, human. We're talking about Amy. If you guys watch HSN... Um, we are talking about Amy, the the Amy Morrison, yeah, the beauty host at HSN, and she is a stunning. I mean, and she is. I've seen her with and without makeup. I've seen her come in, like hair in a ponytail and a pair of sweatpants, to being like glammed up in four inch high heels. That woman, stunning with without, but inside even prettier. I know like she's she's just a lovely, just, lovely she's, person. She's a package. It's rare that you meet people like that. But yeah. anyway, I was watching her last night on Beauty Report. I didn't even know you were on. Yeah, I was on Q2 with Jane, who was fabulous, by the way. I love my what Janie. What were you guys talking about? I had the um, uh, the TCE powdered foundation on last night. Oh, on Q2, fancy. Well, I miss Jane. La- was it la- last week? I was on with Courtney, mm-hmm. and Jane was on vacation, so I missed her. And she asked me, "Can I do her Q2 show?" And I'm like, "Of course." You know, I would never say. So you had to go down for that or you were here? No, no, I just popped in the studio. Oh, okay. I popped in the studio and did it here. So that was it. Nothing else really going on, to be real honest. Like it was like this. I don't even know. I don't even know what day it is. I saw my baby. How's he doing? Good. I love that baby. He's the cutest thing in the entire world. he's going to be four this year. He is going to be four. So I went Easter shopping for him. That's crazy. I went Easter shopping for him uh, this past weekend. And it's funny because, well, I went with his pop pop, which is Bob. It's a Bob Chronicle. Oh, we, it's a Bob Chronicle. It's a Bob Chronicle. Yes, we haven't had a Bob yeah. Chronicle in a and long time. And then we'll get then we'll get into the nitty gritty stuff. But real quick, so I said I have to go be, because you know if it, everything will be picked over if you you that know that was smart. So yeah, so we went, and I'm like, okay, pick out some good things for Easton. Ready? Pick out. 
pick out some stuff. I'm going to pick out some stuff because I know what he likes, right? Like he yeah. likes peanut butter cups. He likes car salted caramels. Does those, he really? Oh yeah, the um, the ones that are square. The the not the oh the expensive Reese's? ones. No, the expensive ones like the fancy candy. Um, What's they're, that? They're like squares, and they got thin little caramel in them, and you can get it with mint. They're, um, shit. I don't know. Uh, it'll come to me. It's tip of the tongue syndrome. Um, My hair I think it begins crazy. with a C. It's not Cadbury, but they it's have something the best like chocolate. that. By the way, what the Cadbury is not America the same in America. Is fake, fake, fake. Yeah, it's not the same as Brian it is Brian bought in it, and the I US. took a bite, and I was like, <laughs> very waxy here. Well, Oof. that will be a podcast. You know what? Here's a really good podcast because it's something that bites my ass. What's that? Um, it's it's the food that we have here, and the ingredients that's allowed in the food that we eat that we give ourselves and our children. Why don't we di- that dive into shit that right now? Is Why don't we not talk about it? Allowed in in Europe, it's banned. So, like, I'm sorry. So, no, just so that I, we're clear, we, are you we telling me that, that our country is poisoning us? Well, oh, maybe. thank you. I knew that. Well, already. don't look at the sky. But, um, <laughs> I, no, I, I'm not prepared because I went for that podcast. I really want to be prepared because I want to give you a list of ingredients that I really want you to look at. You don't and need look a list. For. It's everything. Well, Starting with the corn and the wheat. That's where all the issues stem well, from. Well, yeah, but there's other things like, like, the, like, they Most of don't our food even is sell fake. Skittles in Europe. They won't. It's banned because of the titanium. But no, it's because it's that, cancer-causing ingredients. They have, and then stuff that you're giving kids, like red dye number five. Yep, causes a lot of neurological um, ADHD, problems. ADHD, hello. And then let's give our kid a pill to calm them down after a pumping them full of dye that's making their brain go nuts. I mean, I'm s- sorry. You sound that- a lot like me. Have we been hanging out together? <laughs> that's another I podcast. Know. I wanted to talk about shrooms today. We'll talk about shrooms. All right. But, but that's- I'm telling you, that's going to be on, if you guys want to hear about that. That's it's going- my passion project. That is going to be on the list. I got a lot of those. That's going to be on the list of, in the next three or four mm-hmm. podcasts to Bad. talk about. And I'm going to bring you a list of the ingredients, like BHT, all this shit. And you just go, and here's, oh my God, I thought that that was Angie. I thought that it dog It is Angie. Got, I didn't see Angie. I saw the dog running. Oh, oh. I just see Angie. Angie came in. Angie, um, who who runs the joint here, uh, she got a puppy. His name's Malfi. It's very cute. And you all know I like dogs. I got my Teeter Frieder man here. Right here. That's my boy. Um, all right. So we'll He's t- coming we'll- to stay with me, you know. I know you told me. So no, we'll. Yeah, I don't know if you're here holiday. next week, Doris. I actually don't think no, that you I'm are. No, I'm not here. So you're going to have to have a stand in. So we'll probably skip without you here. So we might not have the podcast for a couple of weeks, but, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And we'll definitely be talking about the fact that our food system is really effing toxic. And that's why why we have a lot of the health issues that we have in this but, country. It all goes back to the food. And that is something that people do not want to hear and that people get upset about, but it's the truth. Well, truth hurts. and also about marketing. So all food marketing, food marketing, totally all unregulated. the stuff that's eye level too, that's all eye level. Whereas I always tell you in a grocery store, never go to the center of the grocery store. That's like going down cancer aisle. Stay to the outskirts of the, the grocery store. But if you go down cancer aisle, <laughs> you know, that place. Well, hold on. Everything can is I, eye level, can I processed, give you a good, and disgusting. A good quote, and then we'll move on yeah, to, I love, to the next thing. You know me, thing. I love good quotes. So we are fed by the food industry. Let me see if I can get this right. We're fed by the food industry that pays no attention to health, and we're medicated by the health industry that pays no attention to food. So you have, and then big pharma's on the side, like, yeah, profiting off of everybody's sickness. Do you ever say that thing before you go? Big food, big ag, and big pharma are, uh, sorry, big food and big ag are kind of the same thing. Yeah, that's agriculture, yep. What am I missing? Pharma, ag. Pharma, agriculture, big food. They have the most lobbyist dollars. Yeah. They're the most unregulated, as much as everyone's sitting Absolutely. there going untrue, true. True. And they are responsible for the, the unbelievable rate of chronic disease that exists in this country. My last thought before we move on. We spend the most on health care in this country. Yeah, and we and have we're the, the sickest. sickest population. And that's yeah. not because we have the biggest population. Uh-uh-uh. No, that's not the case. No. 
we have the most over-medicated, most owned by lobbyists, and most corrupt government. Uh, all right, go ahead. Uh, no, all I have to tell you is, in, in this, this is our conference room. So you're seeing the back wall, which is pink. The front is all glass. And Angie got this puppy, and this puppy's going rogue. He's going <laughs> wild. He's going wild. But you can't see that, guys. But... It's if pretty funny. But all right, so so it's really interesting. I mean, we could do so many episodes on food and what's in the food. We're gonna, and we're gonna. But how, we, we get how, excited. We get excited and we get well, off. Well, I think you look at you look at and you look at so many things that are actually happening. And for instance, for instance, I knew this was gonna happen and I'm just gonna plant the seed and then I'll leave it alone. Um, you know, the big ship that just took out the the bridge down in Baltimore, I right? Do. And it's very tragic. Tragic, a lot. But there was a lot of people that died. There was a lot of people that died. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get off that damn bridge, right? I don't know what happened. But now that bridge takes a lot of toxic chemicals. Uh, that that port. Mm -hmm. That port takes. Yeah. It was takes built all, for that. That's right. Takes all the. Um, interesting enough. Uh, all those cargo things, interesting, are all now leaking into the water. All of the chemicals that were on that ship? Yeah. Well, can we just leaking say this? Leaking into the water. Can we just say this? I didn't watch it because I don't ever watch yeah, that crazy. crap, but you watched that movie that's on Netflix that was produced apparently by the Obamas. Leave the world that's behind. the opening scene. Yeah, the opening scene is when a tanker loses um loses oh the goodness, satellite humanity. and it comes up Come on. on the thing Come on. you're getting close to waking up no, well the alarm it, clock's going off here's here's everywhere. the thing with that it, it, it's time to wipe the sleep out of the eyes no what's what look what happened in ohio what happened in ohio oh with that that the train derailment oh that was a couple months ago that was about a year ago yeah yeah, no, I mean, listen. They've never fixed the water supply. No, they won't. There's people not, are all poisoned. It's not an accident. How many, this is my question to you, okay? How many coincidences until people realize that it's statistically impossible for all of these things to be a coincidence? Do you think that that computation is no, ever that, going to... I just think that that takes, cool. that takes um, a lot of critical thinking skills and sometimes it's easier not to think about them because if you start thinking about it, then you like, have to be responsible you have to be responsible and it's also can be depressing and you can get anxiety from it so sometimes it's safer just to live in your bubble and live your life well if you live in fear but then you know that's but another the, podcast because that you could talk about vibrationally if you're living in a state of fear and anxiety i mean that's the worst state that you could ever be living in. That, so. it's not good for your body no it's horrible that's why you would do shrooms um, you would do microdosing. Yeah. all right so why don't we jump into that you want to the, i don't you know you didn't get to finish saying what you were what, what, was what you were going to get for easton for easter oh with the Bob Chronicle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish the Bob Chronicle. So then we'll jump I into go, the shrooms. I go into the basket, and I'm, like, looking around, right, like, trying to get some stuff for him, right? Some cute things. Just cute things, because I don't want him to have too much candy. Right. I don't want to be... Because he loves candy. Well, guess what? So what? All so do kids I. do, because it's just as addictive as heroin. Well, you know what they tell studies. you when you when you have it's a baby? It's just as addictive as heroin. Do you know? No, it's actually... Here's your mic. I'll drop wait, it. Wait, hang on a second. To quit sugar is harder than to quit heroin. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. So It's been proven in my, my studies. Well, they tell you don't give the babies fruit in the beginning because mm -hmm. then they'll be addicted to sugar. That's what I do. And they're not going to want their vegetables. There's a whole podcast that we could do. Another one. Let's put this down. Why don't we do down. a series, a food series? Here's talk about the food series. When and how you should eat your food. Food combining? Yeah. That's a really good one. Most people don't realize if you eat your food a certain way that it will actually help you stabilize your blood sugar, um, stabilize your f weight fluctuations, uh, which is really good for people that are in menopause. Yeah. So how you should eat your vegetables, then your proteins, your sugars. I think it's so hard because the food industry has sabotaged so much, including fitness advice for a really long time and told people that the only thing that matters is calories in and calories out, which could not be farther from the truth, right? So basically, if you listen to traditional dietary advice, they tell you that if you eat a bag of Oreos and a bag of broccoli, if they're the same amount of calories, it's the same. It's like, no not the case at all. So I think we should do a series on 
food and stuff. But sugar in kids is like, oh man, I used to get into so many fights with family members over that. <laughs> well, I I try and I give him a little bit. Like he loves Reese's peanut butter cups, and he loves these square chocolates. I can't well, think of the name. Well, as a grandparent, of them. here's the tough part, right? Because I fought. How this. do you balance that? Well, no, because I fought, fought this battle. I'm going to fight it again with the girls. It's we really don't do I don't really allow him to eat sugar Re very rarely because you know what happens but once they have a little bit it's a three day fallout mommy it's I want Kevin. that for breakfast it's I like want Kevin that for lunch martini. I want that for dinner <laughs> I want more candy it's, it's honestly one. this is gonna sound terrible it, it would be very similar to like a drug addict and and a need it's like a need for a fix and yeah, then because it landed, should taste good landon has a he would have meltdowns right like if i would say no you're not having any more candy so are, are devin and kate like that with sugar no oh you're done good you don't have to deal with that i no, was like but they also don't but, but give it to my here's, kid no here's here's what i do though when if i listen i always take something when i go to see him i know i i can't help it I just, I don't care. He, he likes peach Gigi. rings and he likes these, he calls them caramels. He likes his chocolate caramels. And I'll take a little bag and when I go there, I say, you can have one. And he's good with that. Not really. He tries to swindle me. He's yeah. pretty good. Well, I know. He'll look at me and he'll go. Kids are good at that. He'll go. And then you can't say no. Gigi. Please. Just one more. Oh, sounds just like, like that. Landon. And I'll go like this. I'll go. After you eat your lunch, you may have one more, but then we're pick, picking them up because when then Gigi sees you again, you'll have one for each day, and then you can count them, and then when your bag is done, Gigi be coming that, that day. Oh. But he'll, swind he'll swindle the shit out of you. I know. They're good he'll at that. They'll work you like Play-Doh. But sh sugar is just so tough. All right, okay, so wait. keep going on the Bob so, Chronicle. Let's yeah, finish and then this. We'll Here's the Bob Chronicle really quick. So I go into the grocery basket. Right, it's there, and I'm putting like stupid shit in there, and I don't like toy, you know. I'm at the grocery store, right? Like stuffed animals. I'm looking for like a stuffed animal, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Bob's got the old time straw Easter basket, old time, like the bamboo straw shit, like round. <gasps> What'd you say to Bob? Green, green grass, <laughs> like green plastic grass. Yeah. Jelly beans. Oh, jelly. I like jelly beans, I like but I like, the, I like the really good jelly beans. The gourmet. The, the gourmet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jelly. What are they called? Jelly something. No, not jelly belly. I hate those. I don't care. The ones that taste like good shit. Yeah, good ones. Good ones. Not like his popcorn were, His were like Brock's. Okay. Uh, no, those are terrible. <laughs> They're so bad. <laughs> and and so I just, I, you can't say you suck. Don't pick that shit out. That will hurt his feelings. So, of course, I just leave it in there. I buy it. And then I just kind of like slide it somewhere else. You're so nice, Taurus. Well, That's going to be, be an episode that we do one day, too. All your relationship advice. Oh, gosh. But anyway, so wait, so wait. I go to my go. Now, before we go, you have to pick out an Easter bunny. Pick out an Easter bunny. You can have a, not a like big a chocolate Easter, Easter bunny. A chocolate Easter bunny. So that, a couple things, a couple caramels. That's it. And then I wanted to get him, like, just like little toys, little things like that he can play with. So he picks out like this lame Brock's like Easter bunny, and I it was really Bob. It was really interesting because it wasn't so much that he was like picking out this lame stuff. I realized he was picking out his childhood candies. It was interesting. So I so said, you did like a Sigmund. You did like a Freud. Yeah, I did experiment. a Freudian thing, and then I went like that. I said, "Are these the things that were in your Easter basket when you were growing up?" Because yeah, I love them. And <clears throat> that's really cute, yeah. Doris. So I, what was I going to say? Well, they suck. <laughs> Put no. it back. No, even I wouldn't no, do that. No, I wouldn't say that they suck, but but I could tell. So, and I said, well, listen, I, I like that Easter bunny. I said, but he really likes Reese's peanut butter cups. So let's get him a Reese's. That way we don't have too much of the same thing. Can we compromise there? I said, but if you want that chocolate Easter bunny for yourself, you can Aww, get it. that's sweet. That's, that's really me sweet being above. like really nice. I know that is nice. Inside, I'm going. That's what the hell? That's like <laughs> it's a Brock's bad basket. Jelly beans. Brock's mm, jelly beans. I don't know really how I feel about that. Shit, you know that chocolate Easter bunny. I hated the chocolate Easter bunny when I was growing up. It was the grossest you know what chocolate candy Easter I bunny. I love, and there's like a very divided line on what this. What is it? And when Chelsea brought them in for us, I couldn't help but eat them. 
And I'm like, peeps? Peeps. I hate peeps. I fucking love peeps. I hate peeps. I think they're so good. Oh my God, I brought them for Easton. I got blue peeps. I hate peeps. Why? Ugh. They're so good. I hate peeps. Oh, whatever. I don't Yeah, I, it's a very divided line. That's what I is. said. And it's a love or a hate. Are you it's guys a very a love or a hate peeps? I don't, all right. We are, we have went around, we have went in five we're like octopuses yes today. let's we have rain so it many back. tentacles let's, let's rain, rain it, back. it back in because this episode was to be shr- to shroom or not to shroom or shroom and bloom you on shrooms it was all about the mushroom the mushroom is very powerful the ingredient. mushroom is it's heightening know, human consciousness and making your skin better it is also a curative ingredient that comes from Mother Nature, and it is something that I used on my own cancer journey and also my dog's cancer journey um, when my dog was um, diagnosed with cancer, had the surgery, couldn't get it all, supposed to die in three months, put him on a regimen of shrooms, lived for over a year. Which is amazing. Well, in dog's life, that's like seven years. Yeah, it is. You know, it's and, a long and time. And just a disclaimer, right, is there's a lot of different kinds of mushrooms. Yes. And they all do different things. Yes, they do. So we're not necessarily going to get into the specifics of that. We're going to talk a little bit more into reishi because that's what we well, use. And he, psilocybin, I'll touch on that a little bit just because I think it's relevant. It is. Um, I did, real quick, though. I'm, we're, I'm not saying that it's going to cure anyone's cancer. Correct. But what I am going to tell you, if you are, if you are immune compromised, if your immune system is compromised, which means that you are going through some sort of um, cancer diagnosis or an autoimmune disease, lethargy. Um, this is going to get good. All of these things, okay. I would strongly recommend that you get yourself on some shrooms. And you can, believe it or not, get, you want organic ones. You can, believe it or not, get them from Amazon. And you want them to be Japanese mushrooms, okay? And there's like reishi, chaga, chaga lion's, lion's mane, mane um, s- snow mushroom. Those would be my four, I would say, a combination. You can go on Amazon and get or you can, your yeah. health food store you can also watch. You want them to be organic you want them to be organic and you want them to be japanese because listen you don't want them coming because because you don't want anybody preying on any disease process right like people prey on illnesses yeah they do i mean but i'm just going to tell comment, you even just even just for your own one. health benefits are you tired are you menopausal? Are you going through these things? You know, our cells are, you know, as we age, they age too. You know, we kind of get older too. So it's like you get on that, put it, you can put it in your coffee. You can get it as a powder. You can take a teaspoon of it. Just try it. You can also you watch, try it for couple, which, like 30 days. Which Yeah, which I think is really interesting. And I always recommend this to people is watching the show on Netflix called Fantastic Fungi because Mm -hmm. it will really, it's Paul Stamets and he's like so, oh my God, he's like a genius when it comes to mushrooms. And it'll break down all the different mushrooms for you and what they do and he talks about his mom. He talks about his mom and her breast cancer and how she supplemented a couple of different things. Can I tell you something about breast cancer? basically went from stage four to nothing. Now, not just the mushroom by itself. You have to watch it. Yeah, so. yeah. Listen, take all of this as like every human. Conversational. Is, yeah. We're not proclaiming not, yeah. anything. They just did this big study, which is really interesting, how teeth, teeth, infected teeth, root canal teeth. Oh, yeah. That, all the, this stuff. They've been talking about that for a while. Well, this big study. In the wellness just, movement. I know, but this big study just came out about root canals mm-hmm. how it's leaving dead tissue but how the tooth there's a big huge correlation how the teeth because the lymphatic system drains down into the breast and people that have uh root canals but which is scary because i have a couple of them um uh, have a higher incidence of breast cancer because of the drainage from the teeth yeah so go to the dentist get your teeth cleaned um 
Mercury fillings, get all them this out. Other, yeah, but you have to go to a very specific kind of dentist to get them out. I mean, we're we're going like all over the place. Yeah, but. all right, go back to the shoot. I just thought that was really interesting. We were talking about that, but yeah, with breast cancer. So you know, I have like I'm all over the place. But anyway, so one of the things you were talking about just now is autoimmune, right? If you have autoimmune, mm -hmm. which is like a like a trend word. So why don't you tell people what that means, autoimmune? So autoimmune is basically when the body begins to attack a portion of itself, right? For whatever reason that. Might might be and I just um, on audiobook finished reading a book the autoimmune cure by dr. Sarah Saul Gottfried um, who's really uh, she's a functional medicine doctor and she's written like four books and they're all fabulous and her latest one is all about believe it or not the connection between trauma and how trauma stores in sure. the body and autoimmune disease you know trauma passes down through generations it too. does it does it's in your dna um, but she really has done a lot of research into the connection between autoimmune issues which obviously there's a lot of different pathways into autoimmune right i think one of them is food mm -hmm. and another one of them is trauma but the book that she wrote talks about um uh, psilocybin mushrooms and talks about using psychedelics to release trauma that's st uh, stored in the body because there's an adage i know you love adages that says our issues are in our tissues and when you go love through, a good adage aren't yeah. adages great yeah they're great makes you think because they're, they're adages for a reason they're true so you know when you go you know, through... when the rubber hits the road it's <laughs> <laughs> a good one very applicable to many different things. But when you go um, through, uh, listen, we all have freaking trauma, okay? As my therapist says, <laughs> we're not prisoners to it, but we all have some level of trauma. And if you're not yeah. processing it, guess what? It's stuck in your nervous system. It's stuck in your body. And it is affecting you, whether you choose to acknowledge that or not. So can, it is. Can you talk about can you talk about your journey with the with the psilocybin and talk about like what it, I think most of the people go okay. What okay, for, first? Let's let's really break let's it break down. One hundred and one. Mm -hmm. What is psilocybin and microdosing? Like explain it to the person that has no clue what it is. Okay, so psilocybin is what is known as a magic mushroom. What type and of mushroom is it? It's it's called psilocybin. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a very you can't potent. get it at your grocery store. You should you should be able to, and there you can't because it's illegal. Because in you know my personal opinion, and we'll get into why, um, it really is going to put a big wrench in the pharmaceutical model of how to treat depression and anxiety with a daily pill because you don't need to do that, right? So it really threatens that whole system that has such a stronghold on American society and a large portion of the world. But what it does is because mushrooms are adaptogens and because they're smart ingredients, in my opinion, they're the smartest ingredient that exists. Absolutely. They literally they have, have consciousness. Network. Yeah. They have their, you know, they have, they, a mushroom can take a dead bog that has no guts. It's dead. <laughs> and actually move the dead bog to take food and nutrients to the mushroom down the hall, like that down in the forest. Yeah, the network, right? The yeah, network, they the mycelium. Move a dead bog with with food down to the next shroom. They are pretty so crazy, right? Smart, and so when it comes to the neurological system, which and the nervous system, which so many of us ignore yeah. and don't pay attention to, but it really runs our lives. Did you know that? So, like stored trauma in your nervous system is your well, entire personality. If your nervous your system mechanisms. shuts down, we can talk about cell. We can talk about every. Your nervous system shuts down. You're dead. Simple as that. Right, but your nervous runs your system heart, runs your your your, it's your autonomic uh, autonomic nervous means system means it runs on its own. That's correct. But then there's your nervous system, which is your coping mechanisms. It's you know your fight or flight. It's your attachment style. It's how you are in relationships. It's how you're showing up in the world. It's how triggered you are by different things. Right. So all these things can really wreak havoc on a person's life. And so for me personally, the what I did because I have trauma. <laughs> We don't have to go into it, yeah. but I have some serious trauma, and I think a lot of us do. It's the reality of the world that we I live in. I think everybody has different degrees really of trauma things. and can be the same, like how people process trauma. Like, people have different... People might... Pro what Nobody am I trying to really say? Nobody really knows how to process it. Yeah. That's the problem. Well, so it stays. So, yeah, it stays. But what I'm saying is that everybody has some sort of trauma, and to what level it can sink you... 
Good. Well, I, mean, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I'm just so trying to say can drive it your... doesn't have to be the most severe trauma, but trauma, we... we. Well, let's define that for a minute because a lot of times okay. what happens I, is... Because I can't think today. What a lot what of times I what t- happens is... I know what I'm trying to say, but I can't say it. We have childhood trauma and our subconscious tries to make us forget about it, but that doesn't mean that it's not still driving us. It's not still driving our decisions, our thoughts, our speech, our reactivity. So it's it's this new paradigm where when you when you rid the body of the stored trauma, you get rid of the negative frequency, and it's gonna sound crazy, but sorry, I believe it, and you leave yourself opened up to receive the new frequency so that you can become lighter and happier and brighter and not be weighed down by these things that weigh us down because they're pretty heavy and they're pretty dark. So when it comes to mushrooms, what I did was I did um, something else, another what they call sacred medicine that my sister-in-law introduced me to that really has you moving. It's like a 12 minute experience and it's called Bufo and it has you literally physically moving. And you have to do these things with people who are trained in these medicines. Like Dora said, you cannot get these off the street. You can't you even get them from either, your doctor. Really. Nowadays, you have either. to get them yeah. with people who know and it's usually like sacred, medicine keeper, it's healers, it's shaman um, who can really facilitate these medicines. You can't do them by themselves. So I worked with some with a group that was fantastic and you literally move trauma through your body. And it's like a 12 minute experience and it's very deep. It's not for everybody. It was fantastic for me. And then I supplemented that after that experience with psilocybin and the psilocybin rewires the neurons in your brain. So what happens when you get depression when you get sadness is it the synapses is that the right term uh, yeah sy- a synapse that closes off yeah so, so your brain your can't nerve, fire then you have this this is a synapse and you have this what goes with you here is the synapses is, so is the synapses the is the messenger goes. carrier yeah so what happens is those are not working properly and it really comes down to like a connection issue in the brain so what does traditional medicine do oh i'm sad i'm depressed oh here's an ssri Look, he's sad depressed <laughs> sorry, sorry dito so here's an ssri and i'm not knocking this because people need to do what they need to do i'm simply sharing what worked really well for me and what i think is going to be in the forefront of this new medical paradigm that's coming in the future so you have to take a pill every single day, an SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And really, I don't know anybody that's ever had phenomenal results with that. Not one person. And I think three quarters of the country is on them. It, in my experience, numbs you out, takes away your personality, doesn't help with any of the reactive patterns that the trauma drives, um, and is a really, I think, shitty Band-Aid for a deeper problem. So what the psilocybin does is you microdose. So you have to, again, work with somebody who knows what they're doing and work with somebody who's gonna be able to formulate this. And how do you, find, how do you find so someone I like that? So I worked with La Luna Soul Healing Space and they're actually based here in Pennsylvania. There's a plug for them, but they're um, a really wonderful group of women and Antonio, who's a medicine man, who's been trained on this and his family's been trained on this for centuries. They've been working with this sacred medicine and they're able to formulate the mushroom rooms and give them to you in a safe and appropriate microdose. And with microdosing, you don't even know that you've taken anything. It's not like you're going to sit there and hallucinate. I mean, you could if you take too much, but with a microdose, it's such a small amount. Like, And you take this every day? So you take it every other day and you do it for about eight to 10 weeks. And what it does is it rewires the synapses and the neural connectivities in your brain. And it allows you to be much calmer. It allows you to be much more reactive. It allows you to process the trauma. And so like with me, my trauma, a large portion of it comes from my son passing. And for a long time, I couldn't like think about that without sure. going right back into the physical state. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So after working with these therapies, the deep sadness and the grief will always be there, but that physical trauma response is not because it's processed through. So I think with psilocybin, it's the... it's the. So when you take this, what's it look? It's a pill? It's a pill. It's yep. a pill. You take it every other day. You take it every other day. You take it empty stomach, full stomach, doesn't matter. Um, I don't know. I can't answer that. I've done it on both and you don't even notice a thing until Nothing. about two weeks in and you're like, wow, I just feel lighter. I feel 
calmer. I feel like my nervous system is recalibrating. So if you if you are a person, to, 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 to here's some questions for you. If you are a person that is on some sort of mood inhibitor um, or depression or what, anxiety, all of these things that are out there, and there's tons of different kinds, and can, do you have to wean yourself off of these things? Can you, you do. Take... So you have to okay. work with Antonio and the team at La Luna Soul so that you're not taking them. Because really what it is, is it's, it's bringing like an element of consciousness into your body, into your mind. So like if you're somebody that takes Xanax every day, you can't, you do can't take the Xanax. What if you take the, the psilocybin and you're on Xanax? So what will happen we'll after you take the we'll psilocybin is you will not need the Xanax because your body, so that, that's a really great example because that anxious reaction is a physical symptom of a really sick nervous system. And when our nervous system is sick, it's not like when you have a cold, when you have a runny nose or you have headaches, right? Like those are physical symptoms of physical sickness just in the body. But a lot of times we have sick nervous systems from whatever reason and an anxiety attack or chronic anxiety or heart palpitations can all be signs of a really sick nervous system. So what the psilocybin is going to do is it's going to help recalibrate that nervous system so that you aren't having those symptoms anymore. You will not need the Xanax. You will not. I mean, I, I feel that vitamin B12 and magnesium did so much for me sure. in terms of anxiety. Yep. But this, um, this medicine is, I mean, you won't need it. After eight weeks, you won't, so then you won't even so think about the Xanax because you're like, I don't want to put that into my body. Like I now have this consciousness and I see the world differently and my lens is, is so filtered that so, you won't so, even want okay, it. Okay, so let's, let's step back. So you say, I see the world differently and my lens is different. Mm -hmm. give, me, give me an example of pre and post. Okay, I will give you... Um, a small There's some, example of small. something that like you and I talk about. The biggest one, which I think I just told you about, is you can think about an experience that you might have had and it doesn't send you back into that physical place of fight or flight. So okay. it doesn't like with me, you know, and you know very intimately the details of Brooke's passing. It's like before I did this, I couldn't think about it without like crying or shaking or shutting down and feeling my heart feel like it was gonna beat out of my chest, like in all the same ways that it did the day that it happened. I can now talk about it as a shitty, horrific, horrible part of my life story, but I'm not having those physical symptoms in my body right now. Okay. Another thing, a much smaller example of it is that you just can let shit go. When you have a really sick nervous system, you can't let shit go. You take everything in and you hold on to it so tightly that it literally cripples you in so many ways, in work, in relationships, in home life, right? So like for me, an example is, and you know, because you and I laugh about this shit all the time, like if Brian does something to like piss me off, I'll just like take a page out of Doris's book and be like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Whereas before yeah. I would just... I would just like harp on it, right? Um, you're also just so it decreases you're just your harping. It, it decreases your amount of harping. Well, here's what it does That's from a, a from a bigger level. From yeah. a bigger level, what it does is it shows you a newer consciousness. So you kind of look at the world through new eyes, and you're just like, that shit doesn't matter. It's not important in the bigger picture, right? So it just shows you the world through a different lens. Does that make sense or well, not really? I think maybe maybe you start treating the world with a little bit more grace. Yes, more grace, more compassion for yourself. Yeah. Um, so all those things. But that so was after, my experience. So after your eight weeks, then what? So then again, again, Just out of curiosity, because this most enough? people are sitting there, and if you're of my age and stature, and you sit there and talk about microdosing or psilocybin, I would look and go, mm -hmm. That's drugs. You're a drug you would, addict. But it's actually not just at say, all. I'm just telling you, it depends on who's watching. And Which is fine. The wonderful and thing I'm about the Doss Squad is that we go from so it's something young that's to older than me. So and and it's it's when you grow up in a certain era and genre, you have a certain kind fine, of fine. um perception. 
you know? Yeah. So, and then it's, I'm always curious about anything. I, I have a very open mind. Yeah. Like so I'm not, I'm not it, a closed mind person. I'm very open to all kinds of things. Cause I think when you stop learning, you might as well just go crawl up. up on a couch and watch Netflix and eat chips today. until it's over. Um, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you, but I think it's, you have to really understand it. Remember Doris, just like we live in a world that's really ru ruled by big food. We live in a world that's ruled by big pharma and we are constantly bombarded by propaganda associated with big pharma. So because this is a natural medicine that they cannot patent that you do not have to be on for the rest of your life, it's a big threat to their business model. So you're not gonna hear about it. It's not gonna come into the mainstream. And you're gonna hear about it from other people that have worked with practitioners and medicine men and women who really know how to do this. Because it's not something, just like you know anything else, you, you no, don't just this, jump in. Yeah, is it something that you, you say every, every other day for eight weeks and mm -hmm. then what do you titrate you really, down no then you have to you have to like you know check in with yourself and say do i need this anymore and i found for me after eight weeks i was like you know what i i really like what this is doing for me i really like how i'm showing up in the world and i had a check-in with jamie from la luna soul who's a medicine woman and shaman and you know i said but i think that there's still a little bit more so i actually extended it for two more weeks and you just get to this point where you just have this innate intelligence where you're just like, I'm okay, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. Like, you know me, I used to yeah. love my wine. Yeah. I don't even love my wine anymore. I'm like, God, I don't, don't even care. Don't make me give up the, the, the I don't Carol even need Collins. alcohol. Like, wait, yeah, it's wait, okay, wait, wait, but like, wait, I just, wait. I don't. Are you telling me that I have to give up the Carol Absolutely Collins? Absolutely freaking not. <laughs> not the Carol Collins. I will have a Carol Collins with you. Here's the deal. It's just, Do you want to know what a Carol Collins is? It's a martini. It's a martini. I don't drink. You know that. I'm not, well, I don't you drink. do now. Well, now I drink. Uh, I don't drink. I, I just don't drink because my body doesn't process alcohol the same way. The ne I lose a day if I drink. I have to be willing to lose the next day if and I who drink. who wants to do that? No, because no. I, it, I don't want to nurse that shit, right? No, I wouldn't either. But when we go to this hotel That's because you don't Florida, do anything. You're like Brian. You don't do anything in moderation. <laughs> No, I'm an all or nothing. <laughs> you are all or nothing. Listen, if I'm going to drink, I'm going to get drunk. If I'm going to gamble, I'm going to go out broke or with a ton of money. If I'm going to, you know, whatever. Go if big or go home. That's it. That's what I, moderation to me is like boring. Oh I my want, God, you sound it's like all Brian. or nothing with me. But I have learned that nothing's okay. So there's a difference that comes with age. What do you mean? That doesn't come with wisdom. Well, because if you're all or nothing, it's like I'm either going to drink to excess and put a lampshade on my head or, or or not. And I'm okay with not. Yeah, I'm at that place now, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, that I, took uh, me 60 years but, to get but to that place. Enough about, so the psilocybin is how I love the mushroom. And I think it goes so much yeah. deeper and we don't have enough time. But it's this really... I keep using this word, but it's a sacred ingredient because it has so much consciousness for humanity and it's mental and it's physical and it's with sickness and it's with physical sickness and mental sickness. It's really a powerful ingredient, but I think it's really important think, that we talk about. Do you think your experience just out, of curi just out of curiosity? No, I like to listen to other people's experiences. Do you think if somebody that is suffering from some sort of anxiety or depression, that's taking like, you know, any of those kind of like mood enhancement Which type most things. of the country is. Well, they okay. are. I'm not. I, I take... I take Synthroid. Okay. And I take I take HRT. I take hormone replacement therapy. Okay. Listen, whatever PS works. Yes, by the way. Um, my mom still takes it. She's 82 with HRT. Um, but that being said, do you think that could be something that they could try because i think sometimes people are so scared because that becomes that pill has become such a safe it's almost like a seatbelt in a car when they take that pill the yeah. xanax or i don't know what, yeah, but what are the I, other I names would, are i would ask you this i would say no i don't ask me anything because i don't take it but but well, I would for say other to somebody, people, I, had, I have a lot of friends. I would I, say, you know, is that really working for you? Is that Xanax really working for you? But I or think is it a short-term Band-Aid? I think what happens with people that take these kind of things is because they were spiraling so bad 
that this at least stops the spiral. And, and I've for been you there. To... I've been there. And for me, it was just like, no, this isn't it. Trust but, me, no but... one has spiraled more than me. And it's like, you know. No, all I'm saying is, all I'm, all I'm saying is this. This is you have to you have to want a diff different. Of course, you have to want it. Like I used to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Not even gonna lie, used to love them. I used to. Well, doctors used hide. to say that they were safe. Not well, even. It doesn't matter. Kidding. Listen, when you grow up at my age, everybody smokes cigarettes. They had the hot chick, and I smoked Virginia Slims. And did you ever see the guy that smoked the Marlboro Man? Mm -hmm. He was hot, um, and it was a thing. So, but but I just didn't want to smoke anymore. So. Mentally, your mind can do anything it wants totally to do. Totally agree. No ma damage, not damage, whatever you put your mind to. I just like stopped. And people are like, how did you just stop? I said, I just stopped. I just put them down. Yeah, I remember but that. I mean, you did. But everybody, every one of my friends, everybody smoked. Everybody smoked. And now I wouldn't go back to smoking because that shit's so expensive. But I did yeah. enjoy it. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed having a cigarette after I ate. If I had a if I had a Carol Collins, oh, a nice cigarette was great. But I did mean, I don't you do it know? Anymore. I shouldn't tell you this, but apparently they don't there's actually a lot cause of data. cancer. There's a lot of data on the nicotine receptor yeah. and how it is actually really in um, the proper amounts, actually really good for your nervous system. Here's it the promotes here, cellular regeneration. Okay, so, so I'm not saying that smoking is good. Okay, so please I don't go misinterpret buy a me. A pack of cigarettes. No, here's the dip. Here's the difference. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, cigarettes back then versus cigarettes today. So cigarettes back then, oh God, I'm not promoting cigarettes. So please don't like give me shit on this one. Um, cigarettes back then did not have the addictive chemicals, the anti-burning chemicals. I, I believe, and I could be wrong. I haven't kept up on it in years, but I think a cigarette has 68 different chemicals that keep you addicted to it, that stop the burn, all of these things that, and it's really the chemicals that they put Wanna in the cigarette. Want to know something? So does our food cause... today. Well, I know the food does, but here's the deal. If, if people that used to smoke back then, they, you were just, you were smoking tobacco. Right. Right. So it was a nicotine response. Like and you that... have a nicotine receptor, just yeah, like you have an endocannabinoid receptor. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as you smoked a cigarette in the morning, you went and took a crap. It, like, got your, <laughs> so, got your so body what you're saying is the rolling, constipation you know? wasn't the issue that it is today with all of our messed up microbiomes from birth control? Yeah. Well, Yes. Well, we have to keep going because we well, are... where did we go on no, no, this No, 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 no. We need to talk a little bit more about no. mushrooms. Let's talk about mushrooms. your experience with them and my, why my... we landed and why we have this amazing new product, which is our super spray serum, yeah. which I've gone through three bottles of. And it's basically the only, honestly, the only skincare product that I use now. This and the regular serum together. That's it. Which this we stuff just got back so in stock, by the way. Good. The regular mushroom serum. Oh, I love it. So the reason why I became like a, a mushroom addict um, oh, is, so is because it's a very, very interesting thing. Years ago, this is about 17 or 18 years ago, um, I was working with a company that was going on QVC. It was a hair care company. And they were asking, I was actually working with the creator. They had never been on air before. And I was helping to train them how how to demonstrate on air, how to talk on air, like how to talk about your products and the benefit. It's an art, it's an art, and it's it's something that you develop over the years, and they had asked me if I could work with them. So the guy, the, the guy that ran the company, not the guy that went on air, and I'm not gonna give out any names or anything, but I will tell you his name is Daniel. And he was a great guy, really, really lovely guy, super smart, like, Knew all things about like his hair business. I enjoyed like really, you know, talking to him and everything. And like I said, this is about 18, 19 years ago. And then I proceeded to hear his story. He starts telling me, he goes, yeah, that um, he had stage four Hodgkin's disease, went on a clinical trial, nothing was working, and they put him on hospice. And he was in his late 20s. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he was basically um, going to die. He was going to die. He was literally facing, looking at death's door, wow. getting his shit in, in order. In his late 28, 20s. 28 years old. 28 years old. And, um, yeah, had had battled uh, lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
um, for several years, and it just, you know, wasn't working. So what happened was he started taking this mushroom blend started there was he was on no more chemo no more he was done just done you know done and he started taking this this autoimmune cocktail japanese it was reishi chaga lion's mane these mushrooms all japanese Guy's fine. Well, because you told me this, and I find this fascinating, in Japan, the mushrooms are the first line of defense Absolutely. against cancer. Yeah. They're yeah. what they go to first, right? First, yeah. And chemo is last. Because chemo, yeah. the real truth, again, this is hard for people to hear, but chemo is actually designed to kill tissue. They just well, hope it kills, that it kills it, the cancer before it yeah, kills, it kills both. the person. It, it, kill, it, kills, it kills, kills healthy tissue and, and, and sick. They, yeah. they, they just take, that's why anyone that's going through chemotherapy, you really can't have a cold or anything around them right. that because they're immunocompromised. They have, yeah, they have no immune system. So what the mushrooms do is just build up such a strong... So it's interesting because there's been a lot of studies and stuff like that, like... Pe some of the studies that, that I've read, and I have a tendency to believe these myself, and like I said, this is all just personal. Please don't, whatever you believe, you believe your. And that's we're good. We're good yeah, with it all. We're, yeah. Um, is that cancer actually is in every one of us. Like, the cancer cells exist, but our immune systems are really strong and keep it at bay. Mm -hmm. And when we get stress, when we get bad food, when we let ourselves go, when certain things happen in our lives, our immune systems can go out of whack. And when they're like these little soldiers, which are part of the cellular, the macrophages and all these things in our cells that do all of these things, they kind of like these little warriors, the mitochondria, they all like in these cells and they keep these shitty little cells at bay. Like they say, no. You're a bad, so that's why cancer is called the silent killer, because what cancer does, cancer is a tricky little bastard, right? So say that here's my finger, and then this is a regular cell, and this is a cancer cell. Cancer goes in and says, look at me. I'm a little finger like you are. You don't need to Attack fight me. me. You don't need to do anything to me. That's why it's called cancer is called the great imitator. So you don't need to do anything because I'm you. I'm a finger and I'm supposed to be here. So this guy goes, oh, okay, I recognize you. You're a little finger. I love you, little finger. I'm not going to fight you. This guy brings two. This guy brings three. Still, oh, you're a finger. Oh, you're good. I like you. You're not different. You're not a bad guy. Four, five. Now, all of a sudden, he's sitting here, and then he rears his ugly head like this, and he goes. Just kidding. Holy shit. That's what cancer is. So, that's and that's why analogy. most of the time people don't really realize they have cancer until their, their, their symptomatology, which means they have some sort of symptoms, that kind of thing. And by then it's late. By then it's, it's, it's aggressive. But what happened with my friend Daniel was he started on this, this mushroom regimen and um, he's alive and well and still, still running that company, P.S. and by the way, 20 years later. So his immune system was obviously compromised, again, recalibrated yep. though, strengthened. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so many ways that you can do that. But if you could summarize mushrooms in one sentence, what would you say they are? I just really think that the world, they're the world's smartest ingredient. And reishi is reishi. known as reishi is known as the, the mushroom, mushroom of, of immortality. So it doesn't amazing. mean that you're going to be immortal, but it has such amazing benefits to reishi. Pro aging, pro aging, cellular renewal, cellular turnover, microbiome um, gets into the the cellular network. So that's when I got cancer or was diagnosed with cancer. Um, Probably when I was smoking. <laughs> no, I probably you, was. I'm you kidding. You shared though that it, you I, feel it like came it from was from when know you were a chiropractor. Yeah, you were giving X-rays. Yeah, I, and I did things that I wasn't supposed. Did you to have do. any sp symptoms? I I had. It was growing in my neck. It was like this big. So you could see it. Yeah. Did you have any other physical symptoms? Then? No, not no? one. Not one. It was the reason. Interesting is that it was only in one lobe. The other lobe was perfectly pink and fine and working. The like the doctor almost didn't take it out. But if one cell. 
one cell from this guy. And that's what happens with cancer. It's why he's a tricky little bastard. One cell would have got out, I would have died. With him. Nobody lives five years. No one's lived past five years with the cancer that I had. Wow. So, so they, they removed it. That's and amazing. I plowed myself with the mushrooms. Like literally... I was a mushroom pizza. Like, I ate so many mushrooms. You could and, eat them, too, in their raw form. Well, I did eat them. Well, yeah. no, I eat, I eat, I got dried mushrooms. I, yeah. You know what's really interesting? I would sprinkle them on my food, yep. like yep. salt, um, and I ate them. And um, So just in, in layman's terms, right, if I'm understanding this correctly, so what they are, were doing is strengthening your immune system so that it could fight what it needed to so fight. So when these guys went... Hey, bruh. this guy goes, really? F off. Okay, that's a very good analogy. It makes a lot that's of sense. That's what cancer is. It's so most people go, I got cancer. How did I get it? Why did I get it? I don't know how I got cancer. Nobody does. It, we all have cancer within us. Right. There, we all have good. Listen, it's we just poop. the trauma, yes. the chemicals. Yeah. Let's, the let's figure. We put food. in food, we poop, we all have waste. And it's whether or not our cells and our bodies are strong enough to eliminate the waste. And what happens when our bodies become clogged and tra traumatic and all that other stuff, those cells go, a cancer cell is just a haywire cell. That's A cancer cell is a cell that was normally doing it like a heart muscle cell or a liver cell, and then it just becomes haywire. You know what I'm doing next week? What are you doing? A parasite cleanse. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it do looks you, interesting. Do you, do you want to know something? It's so funny that people do parasite cleanses now. Not that it's funny. Do you know when we were growing up, this is really too much information. Um, they used to do that to all the kids. They used to worm all the kids. Well, it's smart because I don't know why we pretend in the United States that we don't have parasites because we do. We've got tons of them. Well, we just if pretend you have an like animal in your house, you've got a parasite. Problem. Exactly. So because they, they shut off, they they shut off. But most of the time, P.S. and by the way, uh, a lot a lot of times, so so we don't go like so crazy down holes, but. With the parasites and stuff like that that you pick up from animals that live in your house and stuff like that, because you do, um, because they're there's little spore sites. These little yeah, they can live in the digestive they, tract and they can cause. But a problems. lot of times, our digestive tract, the acids in our digestive tract, yeah. will kill them off. So it's not like everybody needs to go deworm. No, themselves. but you need to get like you know, there's there's mucoid plaques and there's yes. heavy metals that can reside in the yes. digestive tract and the parasites can live in there anyway. That's my rabbit Whoa, hole. Whoa, we are, that is another let's, podcast. Let's talk about this new spray serum because by the time this airs, this will have launched. And I've been talking about this so much to like anybody that will listen because I think it's such an amazing product. And I, honestly, it's not often that I have that reaction, right? It's not often I'm like, oh my God, I've used three already yeah. since it launched. It's I'm made never even such allowed a difference. To, to like present this ever on air. I love this it. will only be Lee's because product. Because this is, this is the analogy that I often think about with this. It's like when you have a, a sponge that's brand new and it's dry mm -hmm. and then you try to put water on it, what do you have to do? You have to just like you stand to, there for like a minute yeah, you have to before prep it, it yeah, starts yeah, to you absorb. You have to kind of like massage so, it in there. Yes. So I have found the same analogy to be true by using this in my skincare routine. So what it is is a spray serum that's got the same amazing technology and mushrooms that are in our regular serum, mm -hmm. our hyaluronic serum, but now you're getting it in this incredible mist. Oh my God, the mist. Can we talk about the mist the for mist, a minute? The whole packaging in this thing too is great because the mister is the perfect amount. It doesn't squirt in your face. Right. Gives you it's this very light. very gentle, fine. That. So if you love our original reishi mushroom this serum which literally is sold out. To it. and we just got it back in it's sold out every single time that we've had it um because it's so powerful i cannot live without that serum i know it's that's how, listen that's how i feel about this too as much as i love that's the regular serum changed my skin is as much as i love this too because i use this first this is a, and then i put my skincare on top of it. so like my skin is prepped and it's ready and it's so much more hydrated i'm not getting the dry patches i'm not getting the flakiness i'm not getting the skin that feels like it's one side too small and it's all thanks to this product it's really different there's no one else that has this out there right now you can use it by itself you can use it mm -hmm. i like to use it on clean dry skin and then i put my serum on top of it you can use this over makeup if you want like my babysitter loves to use this all the time she sprays you it on throughout makeup, the day yeah as a makeup setter yep 
Yeah, the reason why the aerated version of the serum is so much better um, is because the molecule is so much smaller, which means that it can actually get into the skin easier versus like the heavy hyaluronic. Right, it's not but that I put our the serum's heavy on top of but it. But it takes a hot minute for that hyaluronic. This right here, you're dousing throughout the this day. This also your skin. has eucalyptus. Yep. It's like a spa experience. I mean, it is it it's really awesome because there's nothing else like it on the market. So I can't wait for you to try this. I've been talking about it forever. It's finally launched. I know I could talk about it for another so hour. Tell but we everybody have to keep else going. What, what else is in it. I mean, it's got, oh, there's the ingredient list. So it's got willow bark extracts, which oh, detoxifies. It's got vitamin B, which is amazing. There's, of course, the reishi mushroom. Um, I'm actually going to look at this because there's so many. There's peptides in here. Yep. There's caffeine extract yep. to firm. Uh, there's Indian gooseberry extract. It's, it's an incredible product. I wouldn't have used three jars of it, three bottles of it if it wasn't. But we also have something else launching next week, which I know you are really <laughs> excited about. All right, so drum roll. Yes. All right, so this is a new product. It's a little bit different. I'm excited about it because I'm the type of person that needs a product like this, and this is our brand new Instatite. So, Instatite firming eye gel. gel. So what this is is for my dolls that have bags underneath their eye that aren't designer, that have etched lines, crow's feet, deep lines. 11s, um, nasolabial fold, forehead lines. I know it says under eye, but quite honestly, it, it goes wherever the lines are. So there are a lot of different products on the market from a lot of different companies that are like these instant firming products. Okay. So I want it and, and people like them. If you like them, you'll love this. If it's something that you haven't tried, you can try it. If it's a product that you don't like that instant firm, tight feeling in your face, then you won't love it. So you know I like to manage um, what products are and expectations, but I wanted to do it in a clean way. Which I so, think is huge, because yes. no one's doing it. So no one's doing this clean. Like you're, they're doing it with chemicals and you see like, um, Gosh, they're everywhere. You see them like on infomercials and all this other stuff, and you see the clock and the stuff gets tight. That's what this is. We use an 11% silicate that's in here, 11%. So that means it's incredibly potent. It works. It's effective. You're going to see the results. But if you're a person Look that Look at what has, else is in there. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. There's peptides in here. There, it, it's niacinamide, niacinamide, so it's not super drying. Yes, there's there's all those good for you ingredients because the longer you can have a muscle relax without tightening, long run slows that Ooh. rubber band effect down. Okay, so if you're a person, that makes so much sense. Yeah, if you're a person that thought like, well, I'd like to get Botox, but I'm scared of it. I don't want to shoot a, a biotoxin in my face, and but I have these wrinkles. What do I do? This would be a great alternative. Now. Is it going to make your face tight? Yep, it's going to do that. Is it going to get rid of those lines and wrinkles? Yep, it's going to do that. You'll use a powdered foundation, not an oil, a water-based foundation, not, I say powdered foundation. And of course, we have a great powdered foundation. That Award-winning yeah, powder foundation. Yeah, Beauty Magazine. Um, so it looks nice and clear like this. That's all you need, this tiny That's all bit. you need to do, just be clear. So that's for so, under so, eyes? Well, I'm going to say you need half of that. So I'm going to say you're going to take... Like a, he like a pea size? Yeah, Start with a, a pea, pea size? size amount. So your fingers like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it underneath your, and you're going to massage it. You're going to massage it underneath that under eye. Not like this light little painted area. Like with pressure, firm. Yeah. You're going to massage it underneath that under eye. And then you're just going to keep... You're just going to look forward, look still. I have a hand fan that I like to use and I just okay. go like this with the hand fan. So within 30 seconds, it's like setting and doing its job. Um, you can use a cool setting on a hair dryer if you want to, to make it work faster. But within 60 seconds, literally this whole entire air will be smooth. But no, of course, in dial 10 fashion that we don't do, it's just like, Hey, it's pullulin. Pullulin is the ingredient that normally tightens everything. So we use it. There's a tiny bit of pullulin in there, but there's more of a silicate in there. And, um, and like I said, at an 11%. So that's a, that's, that's a nice hefty volume to put in there. But um, giving you those long-term benefits that are actually going to work on the skin. This isn't just about tightening. This is about future long-term. Long -term. So, so, so you're relaxing it, it yeah. in the immediate, but over time. Over time, yeah. you're going to notice those benefits. So you'll see it within 30, I'm going to say 
about 45 seconds, it really starts to dry. But if you're the type of person, like, I just want to put it on when you get out the door, use a hand fan. I have those hand I bought them off of HSN. They were like a Today Special, and they were like two for $29, the little hand fans. And you just fan it just, just like that? No, it's a little blow fan. Oh, yeah, you gave me one. Yeah, the little blow fan. But there's a cool <laughs> setting on your hair dryer. Everybody has a hair dryer. There's a cool setting. Hit the cool shot and just cl close your eyes. Don't do this because where, however your facial expression is, is how it's going to stay. So if you do this, that's what's going to happen. So you're just going to look ahead. You're going to relax. Just blow it like that within 30 seconds. Like this is already dry. It's like look already dry. Yeah. Wow. Look at how smooth. Yeah, so this is for this is this is more of a product for me, me not for that. you. I got because, wrinkles. Who are you kidding? Oh please. I wish I had as many wrinkles My as you. My under have. eye area is just a wreck. It's so crepey and wrinkly. This is not So I'm gonna look, have to No, look how look how smooth. Yeah. So if you have pores, you know, and then you, you can use the TCE powdered foundation over top because typically what happens, this creates a seal on the skin, like it seals. And when we talk about sealing on the skin, if you put something that's oily or wet over top, it's going to break the seal, right? Okay. So a powdered foundation typically goes right over top of it. Um, and if you really want to, to be real honest, you can mix a little bit of you, like your concealer in there with it and then just put it on. It just won't be as effective without it so does question that, did that just make sense yes yeah and question for you ask me so, too when you're using this you when do you want to use this like you're applying it clean, clean dry, dry skin, skin. Okay. clean dry skin um so let your skincare really sink in okay or i i'm the type of person i know you guys all i i do things so ass backwards i wash my skin now at night yes don't fall off your chair because of the clay cleanser, I love it so much. Um, if you wash your face, wash your face at night, and then I do. I really kind of like I, I have really dry skin. I don't have any kind of pimple prone skin or any of that stuff. So you I have, like to load on the hydration. I load on the hydration because then in the morning, what I do is then it's there. I just rinse my face with cold water. Okay, tighten up those pores. Yep, it tightens up the pores, and then I go. Like I'm not like doing a whole ton of shit in the morning okay? because I, because it can interrupt and I don't want to wait for it to dry and whatever. But that's, that's when I would do. That's okay. what I would tell you. If you want a really cool, easy regimen, wash your face at night, load up your skincare, go to sleep, let it go to work while your pores. So your pores do this thing at night, right? Like your pores, your pores know it's nighttime. Okay. Like about nine, 10 o'clock, they start to relax by 4 a.m. They really lap relax and then they can let the water out a little bit so you have to be careful about 4 a.m is that why when you have to wake up really early your skin looks extra textured yep yep because it, because it's let the water out so that's why i load i load particularly ingredients so there's multiple different kinds of hyaluronic acid not just one you know if you look at you look at some of our products have multiple hyaluronic yep. acids you'll read it will say sodium hyaluronate this kind of hyaluronate there's like multiple ones because they hit your skin at different times and different levels so that's why you'll always be hydrated and when you wake up in the morning splash with cold water let it dry let it sit and then and then you put it on and it will when i tell you like look i look at how smooth it is yeah, my hand is so smooth too so so the thing is it might be a bit of a learning curve for you if you're not someone that's used to using it if you're somebody that's used to using it there will be no learning curve you'll do like that nice massage into the eye area wherever and let it set um <clears throat> but uh it's 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 look it's pretty cool. So by the time this airs, this Just is going in. to have launched. I have a feeling it's going to fly quickly. I think you're also launching it on HSN. Not till, so, not till the end of the month on HSN. So because of the nature of this product, it's made in really small batches. So it's we different. can't get a lot yeah. at a time. Yeah, it's just different. It's a different way of something right now that it's it's an alternative to botox well yeah and people different kept, of yeah, course people right, kept but. asking me they're like oh i really like that but it goes i don't like the feeling i really like that i just you know i i i pay attention to the ingredients that i put on my face and you know being a clean beauty brand it takes a hot minute to make things that yep. are really effective oh, yeah, it does that when you put on your skin you can be you can trust it right like because it's not i mean we're certified clean okay so that's a that's you know, when you talk about certified 
clean, you know, we're the, the QVC, HSN, we ad, ad, adhere to Sephora's yeah, clean Yeah, and what list. that means for you so, is there's 11 ingredients that are banned in America for use in cosmetics. You know how many we don't use? 1,300. So there's some context for what that means. Yeah, so it's so, harder to make formulas. Yeah, but, but that, it's so that much work, better that are, for you. that are really good. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, I think that was a problem. I think that was a problem with everybody. Like, you can get, it was like makeup you could get that was like, um, natural or clean clean was even like a cool thing when we you know started this brand it wasn't like a big thing but but it's not but something the, the you want to compromise great, on right i know but the stuff wasn't great it just means it's harder it's a it's, lot harder yeah, it takes a hot to minute. get to the formula yeah. but it's so much <laughs> worth, it, worth it in the long yeah. run right it's so definitely not easy i hate to end Nobody. us abruptly but we actually have to go into a pd meeting i do have to work now yeah shit I know. Okay. I like working. It's I know. okay. So this is a wrap on episode four. Yeah. Thank well, you for being here. Good Lord knows where that this one went. This so we is a love must feedback. Watch. Yeah. We love feedback. So if you could leave, mm. I mean, YouTube is a great place. We put the podcast on YouTube every week. So go ahead and leave your comments, leave your feedback. If there's anything yeah. that you want us to talk about more, anything good, bad, ugly, you leave it in those comments because we read them all. We are not shy <laughs> to go there. And we can take all kinds of feedback. Yeah, so we take the let comments. Us know. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate yeah. you being a part of the community. The Doll Squad, even though I messed up the name at the beginning. That's okay. And um, are you on air at all this weekend? No, it's no, Easter. It's Easter. It's Easter. Happy Easter. I got Easter eggs that are all filled with things. Stuffed animals, cars, no. all kinds of stuff. Are you you bring them over to their house and you hide them? I'm not going to see Easton for Easter. I'm going home for Easter. Are oh, you going to your mom? And the kids have um, a wedding to go to. Oh, so, okay. So one of Devin's childhood friends, we call him Peanut. Um, he's not Peanut anymore, but Peanut's getting married this weekend. So, um, so they'll be they'll be, they'll be away for the weekend. Okay, which is fine, which is fine. But I still got I got the basket. Yeah, I'll probably You'll see him Monday. Probably. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't I don't like to really drop it off. I like the mom mom and dad to give the Easter things for. I don't want to be like coming in first. Well, I'm sure they appreciate you know. that. I would. I like to I be would somewhat thoughtful. That. Not always. Not all the time. <laughs> I don't always like to be thoughtful. <laughs> All right, dolls, that's a wrap. We yep. will see you when we see you. Might not be next week, but it'll be soon. We'll make it happen. Thanks for being here.